Hey everybody, this is the Underworld War Part 2 from Mark of Kalf by Aaron Dimsky Bowden. For several moments, he watched the shadow play performance sliding over the ancient rock. His own image mocked him as it flickered against the cavern wall. Winged, horned, the sight his enemy saw. The sight his enemies had seen for almost seven years. Lord, the pack of scabbed, bloody wretches called to him. Lord, great Lord, please. Your blessings, Lord. Incredible. Desperation had them believing that he cared about their lives. Karutal ignored them all, moving to the hulking figure at the rear of the cavern. Most of the dregs and survivors scattered before him, their shadows dancing across the walls in devilish haste. The figure greeted him from the darkness, doing him great respect by acknowledging him. His eyes, lenses, were the same blue as the drought-seasoned sky above the city of gray flowers back home on Colchis. It stood in the motionless drone of active armor, its helm tusked and its great shoulders shaking and speaking of monstrous inhuman strength. To Karotal, it was merely a warrior in cataphracti plate. To the humans that it served, it was a killer made in the image of a hunched and long forgotten primate, godling. Its voice was a vox growled expulsion of thunder on the horizon. Jarudai Karutal, it said. You still live. Karutal nodded with a hum of his own armor joints. So it seems. The Terminator lifted a ponderous claw. It might have been a welcome. And so our paths cross once more, it said. On the 2440th day. No surprise that Thule cited the exact day as well. They all counted the days. It was how the word-bearers greeted one another. Are you the last of the twisting ruin? Karotal was not sure. He had seen none of his chapter in weeks. Exactly 51 days, to be precise. And those he had found had been bodies going to rot in an otherwise abandoned cave. I believe I might be, he admitted. We should speak. The Terminator was silent for several seconds before replying. Then speak. Not here, Karutal gestured to the slaves. The two word bearers moved further into the cave and into a tunnel leading away from it. Thule, he said to the Terminator, how do you tolerate them? How do you endure the whispers and the weeping night after night? Their prayers scrape my ears. The Terminator trudged through the deeper blackness, its heavy tread giving an echoing tr rumble. The only light was that which they brought with them, the iceburn blue white glare of their eye lenses. Onwards they walked into the silence, breaking the serenity with boot steps on stone and grinding armor joints. Do we not deserve reverence? Thule asked. He had the voice of a scholarly avalanche. And do the gods not deserve worship? As Karotal walked, he let his gloved hand trail across the jagged rock wall. The gods have abandoned us, he said, as has Logar. Thule's tucked helm gave a rattle of vox that sounded like a slipping gear wheel. Blasphemy, brother? From one of the exalted Galv or Bach? Karotal's laughter was dry in the dark. 
It had been more than half a decade since Kor Feron fled. Seven years of these tunnels lit by ritual fires and the muzzle flash of enemy bolters. Seven years of smelling the salt stink of human sweat and the spicy musk of leaking sores growing from radiation born burns. Lorgar is not coming back for us, Thule. He was never coming back for us. The sun still bleeds poison into the void. Kalf's surface may be lethal to life, but the ebb of a dying sun hardly threatens a rescue fleet, shielded against the radiation. Thule rounded on him. Rescue is a coward's word, Jurodai. Call it whatever you wish. Would our lordly father even need a fleet? He hears the warp's song. He weaves it and rends it with the ease of silk. Why not just carve reality open and come to our aid? There was a pause as Thule mused on this. You drank from the blessed son's wrist and tasted the divine blood. How can you, of all the legion, bring this blasphemy to me? What madness incites you to walk this holy darkness and speak such heresy? Speak the truth, Karutal quoted without a smile, even if your voice shakes. The Terminator trudged on. Karotal allowed the silence for a time, but he was not the most patient soul ever to wear the red of the 17th. Have you noticed that after two years, even the empty tunnels smell of blood? Thule grunted acknowledgement, but said nothing more. Your servants have been mauled, Karotal prompted. Yesterday, Thule replied. The 13th hit you hard? Harder than you realize, said Thule. The blood you're smelling is mine. His war plate was as ruined as Karotal's as ruined as every word bearers, stranded on this dead world of craven cities. The scent of leaking blood could be coming from any one of the charred ruptures and the thick plating. He tapped an armored fist against his chest plate, breaking the silence with a steel drum clang. One of my hearts has stopped beating. The other labors, even now, I may only have a few days remaining to me, but no more than a handful. The gods only know what's burst inside of me. There was another long silence before Karutal spoke again. I've been moving through the underworld, fighting when I must, but more often merely watching, waiting, learning. Thule regarded him with soulless eye lenses, awaiting an explanation. Karl Tal gave it to him with a sigh. I've been counting the dead, taking heed of all that now lie lifeless. Thousands of ultramarines have fallen, the Terminator said. His voice was sincere enough to make the words an avowal. Perhaps even tens of thousands. I am not speaking about counting them, fool. Another pause. Karotel could almost hear Thule's thoughts, whispering and clicking with displeasure. I'm going to the surface, Karotel said at last. Thule turned his husked tusked helm to the other warrior. To go to the surface is to die. For you, perhaps. I am Galvorbach. My blood is poison, 
My touch corrodes flesh. I have eaten nothing but ash for over a year. He showed his gauntlet. The red ceramite ridged and knuckled with bleached skeletal spurs. The same growths showed across his warplate. His bones had been hardening and pushing through the ceramite as the months passed in the dark. Surprisingly, the pain had been nothing more than a dull throb, no different from the muscle aches of daily training. The Terminator gave his passive regard. You believe the demon inside of you rings you immune to the radiation of the sickened sun? Not an easy question to answer. The demon within him had been silent and unreachable for months. He was half convinced that his last battle with an ultramarine's librarian had somehow left him depleted. Perhaps exercised is a truer word, with a divinity flayed from his flesh. The emperor's lapdogs were beginning to realize the value of the forbidden librarius once more. And there you go. That was part two. I hope you enjoyed it, and I know it is much better than last time. Please keep listening. Thank you.